morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me on hopefully what will be conceiving baby number six. If you haven't watched my journey already, please go back and watch the videos. My name's Ingrid, I currently have five beautiful children, three boys, two girls, and we're currently trying to gender sway pink like we did in 2016, just to see if the gender sway actually did work. We're not bothered what we get in the end, obviously, we just want to be blessed with a baby. And if you do watch all the videos, you'll know we have had our ups and downs. We sadly miscarried in January, February, and it was quite a horrible time. We've had troubles with OPK tests. Uh, there's been lots going on. And when I'm not obviously doing TTC channels, there will be other things like breastfeeding. And hopefully, if you do join me, maybe I can help you answer questions that you have in your head, whether you're conceiving baby number one or trying to conceive baby number seven. Hopefully we can share our journey and stories and share our tips. And this network is increasingly getting bigger and bigger, which is great. TTC used to be such a lonely affair. I know when I first um, tried for a baby uh, a long time ago now, it was 13 and a half years ago, uh, 14 years ago, and I wasn't aware of the two week wait. I wasn't really aware of when you should try for a baby. I knew that you had a period and you know you had to wait for your period to finish. But it really isn't, um, you know, it's not a massive thing that people talk about TTCing, is it? It's only really when it gets to infertility, people feel they can chat about it. Um, there's not a lot out there that, there wasn't, there didn't used to be a lot out there that you could go to, but now we have such a strong network on YouTube. There's so many channels out there. My lovely friend Amber has got a beautiful channel. If you look um, in my comments, you'll see she's commented, she's Amber Fields, she's absolutely amazing, she's got a TTC channel, she's trying for baby number two, and I do wish you all the love and hugs in the world, Amber. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely comment on the videos that I make, if you like them, please put thumbs up, and definitely subscribe, because I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers, so is Amber, and we're going to do a lovely little giveaway, so that will be good, but also, it will really help people who are having questions in their mind that they can't always find the answer on Google. You know, you might be getting CM and you think, is this normal getting cervical mucus at this stage of my period or my cycle? You can literally ask us and one of us, if I can't answer, someone else will. And that's, you know, it's just so nice. You can actually now find the answers to these questions and know that you're not alone. When you get bummed and you get your period and you've been trying for a baby for so long it feels heartbreaking it feels like a loss it feels like grief and people feel they shouldn't speak about it because there was no pregnancy but it's perfectly normal we go through that I go through that I mean we've been trying since September and believe me when I didn't fall in September I felt awful when I didn't fall in November I felt awful then I felt elated because I felt pregnant. Then I felt awful and depressed because I miscarried. There's the ups and downs on the roller coasters. And do not be alone. Please, please, please share your comments, share your feelings. And if you want us to hold your hand, join us on the journey and we will be there for you. I don't want to gabble on about that too much, but it's just saying please subscribe and please comment because people will feed off those comments and it will help others and help you. So, okay, about my story. So as you know, I've got five beautiful children. We're gender swaying pink. We're trying for baby number six. My husband's Aaron, he's all on board. We're doing the Shettles method. So no big O, position wise we can do. We're now in a new moon, but I've been also trying throughout my fertile window, which has been boy on the gender calendar and it's been a full moon. So I've had Himalayan salt lamps burning to balance out the irons. I've been burning lavender. I've had my nail polish on, all things that promote gender sway girl. I've been on a citrus and dark chocolate and green vegetable diet, trying to get as frugal as I can, cutting out salty snacks, processed meat, processed foods. I do wholly eat. I mainly eat actually um, vegetarian anyhow. I probably have meat maybe once in a blue moon, but it does say white chicken and fish is best for a baby girl diet. Um, and we've been eating lots of dairy. I've had lots of full fat Greek yogurt. I really enjoy that. Um, I've been having lots of oat milk because I don't really like cow's milk. And yeah, that's a little bit about the gender sway done. So today I'm on cycle day 20. And as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, I have a 28 day cycle. Occasionally it can go to 29 days, but normally rule of thumb it's 28 days. 
and I finished feeding my little girl who's now two and a half. I finished feeding her, breastfeeding her in October. So when I tried in September, I felt I had too much of the hormone inside me to fall pregnant. And that was it really, that's why I didn't fall. Um, October we missed because it was boy on the gender calendar. November we tried, but I still felt I had too much prolactin, I think it is. I think that's the hormone name in my body so it didn't sustain the pregnancy. That's why I think I didn't fall, plus it was a bit of a stressful time. Fell successfully in December, lost the baby beginning of February at about six and a half, seven weeks gestation. Totally gutted. But today I'm on cycle day 20 and it has been a real roller coaster. Now last cycle, I was expecting my fertile window to be peak at day 14, day 13. Day 13, I had a very, very pale OPK stick. I've been using the Amazon Cheapy One Steps. Bought a massive pack of about 50 for eight pounds, around eight pound 99. Was using those, they're lovely wide strips. Got on well with them for the first few tries, but I felt they weren't giving me a very good reading at 13, day 13. I was thinking, well, I've had all the niggles, day 11, day 12, why aren't I getting a positive? So I went and purchased the Clear Blue Advanced Digital, which gives you your four days of fertile window. You are, however, meant to start testing that at day eight if you have a 28 day cycle, which sounds ridiculously early, and I think it is early, I've got to be honest. I've done it like that this cycle, which I'm gonna go and tell you about in a minute, but I think it's worked out very costly and quite stressful. So, last cycle, just to bring you up to date, I started doing that digital ovulation test day 13 in the afternoon. You've got to hold your pee for at least four to five hours to make those work because they recommend you use the digital when you've had your longest sleep. So i.e. if you work nights when you wake up or in the morning when you wake up so that your, your pee is not just concentrated, it's really had time in your body. So the very first test you do with your holder, you get your holder out, you have 10 cartridges in a box, it costs very... Um, a very a decent amount of money. It's like twenty six pounds, but you can get them on Amazon. Probably Amazon for probably about three or four pounds cheaper. But you get a holder like this. You get a cartridge in a foil packet, and you get ten in a box. So I literally had the holder and ten of these on day thirteen of my last cycle. And cut a long story short. I got the circle first, which is perfectly normal because it's your body getting, it's your, get, the holder is getting your baseline of your um, hormones ready. So you always will get a circle which indicates no fertility or not fertile, as in no fertile, sorry, not fertile, not infertility, sorry, low fertile. So you always get that with your reading, whether you're high fertility, peak fertility, you will get a circle your first reading. Then your next reading should give you a more truer indication. So yeah, last cycle, did um, another one on day 14, got a flashing smiley, which meant I was high but not peak, which surprised me wholly because I had the CM, had the niggles and really thought I was fertile. Anyway, late on day 15, I got the static smiley face, which meant I was ready to go to baby dance that night and a few days after. But we chose just to baby dance that night because we had been doing it quite a lot before, but also I did think that the egg is released between 12 hours and 48 hours, hopefully things will stay in me, the seed, etc. I think that's the biggest mistake I made. I think as soon as I got that static, I should have did it on that day and a few days after. And you ladies, again, this is how it all works. You all commented down below. People fed me other comments. I joined a few more TTC channels from that. Hi, Rainbow Mama. She's another one trying to conceive. Ups and downs on her channel as well. And seriously, Joy in the network, it was amazing. I got questions answered from her site, from Amber's, it was brilliant. So yeah, was really taken aback by my late ovulation last time. So I came on AF sadly, really gutted, went through all that depression like you do. I spent probably three days just depressed really, I'm gonna be honest. I was messaging quite a few of you out there. No, there was two ladies I was messaging a lot and just saying, I can't believe I've come on. We baby danced on day eight, day, you know, we did it all like a day between, we did probably four or five days. It was real, anyway, go back on the channel and see exactly what I did and my updates and that will be how we did it last cycle and it didn't work. So this cycle, I started testing as Clear Blue Advanced Digital recommends on day eight. I also started with the cheapy strips. 
and I'm going to quickly recap you because I haven't spoke to you since my cycle day nine. So today I'm day 20 and it's June the 4th. So I'm going to tell you exactly what we did from day nine. Day nine, we had reflexology. I did an update for you and I had my first flashing face. So day eight when I tested, I had the circle, which is completely normal. I also had, can you see? Um, there's a very faint line on my OPKs. I'm going to have to go through these quite quickly because I don't want to bore you all day long. But yeah, it was quite a powder pink line. There was something there, but not quite. So I was thinking perhaps I'm going to ovulate seriously early, maybe day 10, day 11. Didn't have any niggles. I felt a bit low today, had, had reflexology. So that was a 6am digital of flashing, 6am cheapy strip. And I also did... Um, the 7 p.m. one and it was negative. But it also says when you get a flashing face with those clear blues, you can test twice a day because you don't wanna miss that, that LH surge. You just don't wanna miss it. And this is another thing which I did write down to tell you. Hang on one sec. I went on the clear blue site and it does say sometimes your LH surge can be so low it won't be detected. So the egg can still be released because you need that LH hormone to release the egg. It spikes the, um, it just spikes the egg to release basically that LH surge. So the flashing face means you've got estrogen in your body. The linings get in there ready to embed, you know. So the estrogen is your lining getting built up. That's what the flashing face is. The still static one means the hormone's been detected. So your egg is going to be released anytime between 12 and 48 hours. Okay, but sometimes the LH surge can be just a little too low to read. That can be why you get a flashing face. Also, on day 13, um, if you, um, sorry, it says the other thing could be the surge could be missed. Now, because sometimes you only get an LH surge for eight to 12 hours, if you do a digital test in the morning and then don't do one until the next day in the morning, that's 24 hours. And in that time, you might have had that spike of LH surge. So that could be a reason why you miss a window, even with a digital. Hang on one sec. Hello. We're gonna to go to Teddy's in a minute. I'm just talking about this ovulation test. You gotta be quiet a minute. So yeah, so basically I was on the clear blue site and it said reasons why you might still get a flashy or why you don't see peak could be that your LH surge is so low it might not be detected, a bit lower than some, but don't worry, you can still ovulate. Or you might have missed it. It could be eight, it only it could be that you've got an LH surge that only lasts eight to twelve hours. You've only tested once a day. And that's why they say when you get a flashy face, you're best to test twice a day if you can. So that's what I was thinking in my head because this is brings me on to my story because I'm day 20, remember, of my cycle and I'm a 28, 29 day cycle. So day 10, powder pink line, you can just about see on my cheapy strips. Hang on. Again, a little line. You can hardly see that, can you? But yeah, that was day 10 and it says, feeling a bit sick today. I did feel a bit offish on day 10. We did the D, day nine, baby dance day nine and we baby dance day 10. We were just gonna go for it this cycle. We just said, let's do whatever we feel like we wanna do. And some people have commented, perhaps I'm baby dancing too much. You're probably right, but you know what? We had such a laugh, it was quite good. But OPK was negative. My digital flash was flashing on day 10 and that was 6 a.m. I then did again, an evening reading on day 10, flashing. So anyway, cut a long story short, this was day 10, day 11, still getting flashing face. My OPKs wasn't, they weren't getting any darker. They were just basically squinty lines. Still see them. If that was a pregnancy test, it's a squinter, but it's there. But yeah, symptom wise, no niggles on day 10, day 11, just a bit of CM. Hang on. Day 12, I thought, gosh, I must be ovulating around now because my CM started, it's a medium flow. We did the deed again. I'll go through when we did the deed in a minute. Um, but I felt really bloated on day 12, really bloated. Did a cheapy strip and look, that's getting darker, isn't it? So I'm thinking, oh my goodness, don't tread on my tea. I'm thinking I'm gonna have a peak smiley tonight or tomorrow. So that was day 12. Look how dark it's getting. Okay, so that's day 12, medium CM, not feeling niggly. I just wrote, feel bloated, medium CM, cheapy strips getting darker. Did one at night and look. That to me is like, 
brilliant, everything's on track. I've had a flashy face since day nine, day 10, day 11, day 12. I've looked up on Clear Blue, they've said having a flashy face, some people do have them just for naught to four days, but it is fine to have them longer. And that's another thing. They say on the Clear Blue site, I've read it and read it and read it. Absolutely fine to have 10 straight days of flashy faces if your period cycle is regular. If it's not regular, after 10 days they say stop testing. Just stop testing and start again new cycle. But if your period is damn on it, it's 21 days every day, it's damn on it, it's 28 days every cycle, sorry. Keep testing because something will happen. So that's what I'm holding in my head. I'm a 28 day cycle. Gosh, it's been like four or five days flashing but something's gonna happen. I was absolutely positive something was gonna happen day 13. Day 13, CM lots, had to wear a few panty liners. Cheapy strip, same colour as yesterday, dark, and I did a digital, still flashy. And I'm thinking, God, that's really annoying. So then I held my pee and tried not to drink too much. They don't want you to stop drinking, they say. You must drink as normal, but don't over drink. So I just had my normal cups of tea and things. But four and a half hours later, I did a digital and it was flashing. So Tuesday the 28th, day 13 of my cycle, flashing OPK. Um, flashing digital still so I was thinking this is craziness it's got to be tomorrow that I'm peak ovulation but I normally get mild ovulation pain a couple of days before and then it gets increasingly diff increasingly um, bad but there are occasions I don't get the excruciating pain but not very often um, I'd say eight cycles out of ten I get the excruciating like can't sit down for a few hours that pain in my bottom, I've told you about that before. So that's how I know I'm ovulating. So day 13, I don't get any niggles at all. I've got no mid ovulation pain, just CM has increased and my OPKs are still getting darker. So then I was taken completely aback. This is exactly like on another TTC channel I've seen. Um, I've been following Anthena, again, look back on her channel. She's had the same where she's had dark OPKs, it's gone completely clear, negative, and then back to dark. This is what happened to me. Day 14, when I think I should be peak ovulation, still got a flashy face on my digital, um, feel bloated, CM is now a little bit spotty with pink, which is really unusual. I'm thinking, well, I'm too, I haven't ovulated, so it can't be implantation. There's just a few little spitty spots of pink in my CM. Um, I felt niggly, it says here I'm on a four for pain, so I just started to feel on and off niggly one side, so I thought, okay, perhaps it's going to be like last cycle, I'm going to ovulate late, day 15, late on day 15, but my cheapies were getting lighter, can you see, really lighter, so I'm peed off at this point, I'm thinking, I can't understand it, that's 5am, digital still flashy, 5am urine, my, um, really faint line not even there hardly so I was peed off day 15 I'm thinking this has got to be it perhaps it's going to be an exact mirror image of last cycle so 30th of May Thursday day 15 cm was lots felt niggles on left side and I've written here again a four to five out of ten on pain ovulation pain 6 a.m test cheapy faint line 6 a.m digital still flashing and I've put question mark again did, did another OPK cheapy strip, the one steps, the wide ones at 4 p.m. And it's getting darker again. So I'm thinking, is it because of my intake of fluid that I've had those light, lighter ones? Is it because the test strips are a bit naff? Don't know, again, comment down below if you've had this. I know a few of you TTCers have had this, but you know. So yeah, day 15, not anything, okay? I'll go through my baby dancing in a minute, so don't worry. So day 16 on Friday, I'm 16th day of my cycle and I'm losing the will to live, to be honest. I'm panicking that things are going wrong. But I did an OPK in the morning. Again, exactly the same bloody thing. It's like a faint line again. That's 6am urine, so it's nice and concentrated. Flashing still. So at this point, I'm saying to Aaron, I'm day 16. I'm a day later than last time. Nothing's happening. He's like, calm down. You might have already ovulated. Because day 13, just to recap, I tested in the morning with a cheapie and a digital. Um, Sorry, I tested in the morning with a cheapie, but I didn't have any digital in um, cartridges. This is why I 
messaged you guys to say it's so annoying that clear blue don't just do little packs of those cartridges as refills because I was finding 10 sticks if you're testing twice a day with a flashy you haven't got enough if you're a 28 to 30 day cycle you just haven't got enough to test so I was really peed off because day 12 in the evening I'd used up my last capsule you know cartridge so I went shopping morning of day 13 and I tested day 13 in the evening only and that was flashing. So my thought was perhaps I ovulated, had my LH surge late on day 12 when that dark strip was there. Perhaps my surge was like 10 o'clock at night till seven o'clock the next day. And then when I did my digital test again, it was flashy. That's what was in my head. Because I'm thinking, hang on, I've got CM, no niggles, but look, dark lines, dark lines and then by the evening on the 13th they're pale so day 13 I did not in the morning I couldn't do a digital so that was what I was thinking so that little thing that write, they write on clear blue site your LH surge could be 8 to 12 hours therefore missed on a digital ovulation test that's what I was thinking was me right so bring you up to speed again so on day 16 CM lots morning OPK GP is there but faded flashing face still tested again at 7 p.m because they recommend flashing smiley do it twice a day so I thought I'm not giving up now I'm in the routine now it's freaking expensive next time if this happens I'm only going to be testing once a day and that is a hundred percent even now um 7 p.m flashing face so by this point I'm really upset day 17 Ovulation pains on a number seven. It's a little bit mild. Again, left-hand side. Digital cheapy still. Digital is flashing. Cheapy strip is still there, but faded. I know it's really hard me doing this. I should have done it on a sheet, but I've done my other ones on a sheet. I'll show you them in a minute. I just put them in my diary as I do them. Um, and then it brings me on to Sunday, which is day 18 of my cycle. 7 a.m. Back to a fairly darkish line. I was really pissed off at this point because I'm thinking it's gone from really pay really a faded line to nothing at all to dark to faded to getting darker again. So that was Sunday, 7 a.m. and I did a digital and I'm panicking now because I'm thinking I'm well and truly into my second flipping box. I've used the same holder though. You can't go and use a new holder halfway through a cycle. You have to use that same holder or else you're gonna get a baseline reading again and that you might miss your spike again. So when you run out of cartridges, use the same holder that you're using. Do not go and unpeel a new holder because you're gonna get a circle baseline again. So you might miss that high fertility. Remember, LH surge might only last eight to 12 hours. Some of us, our LH surge lasts up to two days. That's why sometimes you can get two days straight of dark OPKs, we know that now. So always use this holder 100%. Do not use another new holder in a cycle. You just go and buy a pack of cartridges and use the cartridges. That I know from Clear Blue, from all your comments and from other YouTubers, 100%. I've actually looked on Clear Blue and a lady phoned Clear Blue and there's a YouTube video where she actually phoned them. I can't remember her name, but I'm following her as well. And they actually said, you use the cartridges, you can go and use the cartridges, but you use that same holder for that same cycle, 100%. And you can use the holder again. If it still works, you can use it again for your next cycle. It's not a problem, but... Um, I think it's about two cycles or something, but yeah. Anyway, don't touch that. So I didn't unwrap this. This is still sealed, not used. I was using the other cartridges. So yeah, 17, ovulation pain on a seven to 10. Digital is still flashing. And we'll go to Teddy's in a minute. Go and watch Peter Rabbit. There you go. That's day 17. And this is where, I'm near the end now. Sit down and listen to me a minute love you right you sit there then oh that's good you sit there she's still in a night dress it's nine o'clock my husband's just done the school run I've done this video about three times because I keep getting interrupted so yeah I was really bummed at 17 day 17 this was Saturday I was panicking and my husband's like we've just got to keep going just keep going until your period goes comes I said okay so days um day 18 7 a.m cheapy strip OPK's done. I'm now running severely low on OPK's at this point, getting a bit panicky, and it's a pale line, and the 
digital is still flipping flashing and at this point I am like I might bail out on my digital I just didn't know what to do I was getting panicked because I'm like surely I'm not gonna don't wobble the thing darling surely I'm not gonna be this late in a cycle I can't be I've had all the CM it's now a medium flow not lots and the ovulation pain is, yeah, it's not severe, but sometimes, do you remember? Eight out of 10 times I get that, but sometimes I don't. So my ovulation pain is still on a seven to 10 on Saturday. By Sunday, it's probably not about a five or six. So I'm thinking, I don't know what's happening here. I was really panicking. And like I say, digital was flashing. And then I thought I'm not testing in the evening. So I didn't bother testing in the evening. I just did. Day 18, I just did the day. So on day 16, I did morning and evening with the digitals. Day 17, I thought, sod this. It's too expensive. I'm getting fed up. I'm just going to do morning urine. Because I think by afternoon, whether you hold your pee for three hours, four hours, five hours, I was getting to the point where I was thinking my urine is too weak to give a true reading. So I think personally, you're better just testing in the morning with those digitals because of the expense and because of the have I drunk too much fluid. It's boiling hot at the moment here. We're like 20, well, it's probably not boiling hot to you people in Australia or America but we are like at 22 celsius at the moment to 26 celsius a day so we've had a real warm patch so I have been obviously drinking my standard cups of peppermint tea but I seriously have probably been guzzling a couple of drinks of water whilst I've been cooking dinner just before the school run so I was panicking my urine could be too weak or on the really crap no I was thinking I was hoping either my LH surge was too low to be detected but I've had ovulation and I just missed that window um that's what I was hoping I was thinking at this point well I think my LH surge was too low it was probably on day in the morning of day 13 or late in the evening of day 12 and I've missed my LH surge but I've ovulated that's what I was holding in my heart um, because I thought, well, there has been ovulation of some sort for that OPK to notice my estrogen and the LH surge is starting to get there. So I was just all questions in my head, to be honest. I've Googled, I've been on loads of TTC channels. I was doing my homework. So day 19 yesterday of my cycle, feeling crap. 6 a.m. we flashing face again. I'm like, this is bloody ridiculous. I'm fed up now. It's costing me a fortune. I've got three cartridges left at this point and my digital holder. I'm just like panicking now. A lady, a lovely lady who, who is subscribed, I think, or she watches my videos, said you can get on eBay five cartridges for $8.99 free and postage and packaging. I did look up that and I've ordered them because I thought, well, I've still got that sealed holder and even if I fall pregnant, at least I can perhaps do a little giveaway to you guys with eight new cartridges and a sealed holder, first one out of the hat if I am pregnant. So I did order them or and I bum though, if I'm not pregnant, I've got them. But that's the only place I can find the cartridges. She is right, it's just you get five for 8 99 Still quite an expense, but a lot cheaper than spending 22 to 26 pounds on the whole caboodle. So I did do that. Thank you so much, love. I can't remember your name. But if you go back on the comments, the lady's there. She's actually put a link in. And if you click on that, it goes straight to the eBay thing. And I literally bought some thinking, do you know what? Five capsules, um, five cartridges are brilliant. I've now got two left. Um, so yeah, they're there. But day 19, I was like 17, 18, 19. I just tested in the morning. Hello, you want to be Superman? Okay. She wants to be Superman. I think daddy's, there you go, he's tied it in a knot because the Velcro wasn't working. That's it. Go and show Peter Rabbit. Are you can, we'll get you dressed in a minute. All pretty. You want to see what you look like? There you go. Superman. Woo. We've been, watched a bit of Toy Story this morning as well and it's only nine o'clock. So yeah, that was my story. Yesterday, day 19, flashy face and look, one steps. They're fading. They're getting lighter. I'm now on the phone to Zoe, who's TTCing, who's also bought the bundle of One Step, saying she had no joy with them. She said literally she got pale lines through the whole cycle. She started testing day eight, day nine. She got pale lines, then nothing, then pale lines. She said if she needs to again, she's going to get the digitals. I've said get the advanced, but like last time, they were a god save, weren't they? A lifesaver because they did work. Obviously, they 
t- told me when I was static, so that was good. But I was just panicking yesterday, having a really down day. I did. I started to do a video for you guys, and I just was in tears because I was panicking. I'm thinking if my LH surge is too low to be detected, perhaps there's something wrong. Then I thought, if I have missed my LH surge, hopefully have I got the baby dancing time to go right. And then I was thinking, you know, why did it work last time and not this time? I was panic mode. Anyway, yesterday, day 19. Hang on, shush. Day 19, niggles left sides on a 5 or 6 out of 10 for pain. CM, back to lots. So my CM sort of got medium flow, 17 and 18, back to lots on the 19th. Literally, this is TMI, but we're a TTC channel and it's a long video, I know. And I hope you're following my story because I do tend to go on a lot. But the CM yesterday, I went to the loo and it was really slidey. Now I had that CM probably about four days ago. It was wet, I was using two panty liners, but it wasn't that slidey. I went to the loo yesterday morning and afternoon and it was slippery slidey and I'm like, this is craziness. I'm day 19 of my cycle. I've got faded one step lines and a flashing smiley. I'm a 28, 29 day cycle. I've never in my life, apart from that one time when you go back on my videos, binge watch my videos, around October, November time, do you remember I had to have reflexology and induce my period because I was 34 days. That's the only time it's ever happened. I thought, this is craziness. I don't know what's happening with my body. Um, I was really panicked yesterday and I started to do a video and I was in tears and really wound up, so I couldn't do it. So brings me on to today. Composure. Right, day 20, cycle day 20, the 4th of June. Guess what's happened? Static. Smiley. Right, morning we. Niggles have all gone. They went from a, literally from a seven pain, day 16, down to a six yesterday. I've probably got the mildest niggle. Probably if we're doing a 10 being excruciating, I'm probably on a two to three today. Loads of CM. Yesterday and today, loads of CM. I've already, I need to change my panty liner. So loads of CM. And I text Zoe first thing going, what shall I do? I'm really thinking of bailing out on these flashies, these digitals. She said, I'll just do one tomorrow morning. If, if you don't get a positive cheapy strip, do one. She basically said, do your cheapy strip. If you get a dark one, do your digital. If you don't, leave it till tomorrow. But I think she's got, I think you ovulated late on day 12 and 13 and you've missed your LH surge. That's what Zoe was saying. And that's what my other mate was saying. So, did an OPK and I also did another OPK, a different brand. Skinnier strips, but from Pound Shop. Dark. But look, the Amazon One Step, look how light that is. That's the same sample of urine. That's quite light. That's darker. I'm looking at that thinking that's a positive. I know it's got to be blazing like that, but that's about as dark as they go for me. I don't think I've ever had them that dark. I think maybe one more shade, if I test later on, I might get a shade darker. But again, will my urine been to, be too weak? That's what I mean. And will I need to bother now? Now I've hit that static. But that was dark enough for me to say to Zoe, do you know what? I'm not going to throw away that urine. I'm going to quickly use a cartridge, but that means I've only got two left, so I'm panicking because the ones that I've ordered on eBay don't come till the end of the week. So I would have had to go and buy a box. But listen, they do say 10 days of flashy face is fine if you've got a regular cycle. But if you're getting 10 days continuous and you're sporadic, stop testing and do it next cycle. Just use your cheapies. But I was confident to carry on and you know it's 11 days of flashing face I've had 11 frigging days of flashing face because today's cycle day 20 I've been testing since day nine okay I've had a flashing OPK digital clear blue advance since day nine so do not give up hope if you're getting a flashing face eight nine, day, t- eight, nine days and you're panicking, thinking, well, the rule of thumb is naught to four days, that is only um, the percentage of women. There was 87 women tested and 
there was still a small percentage, like 10, 20% of people tested and got longer than four days. I was live, losing the will to live yesterday. I was so crumbled because I thought I've either had too low, I've, my LH surge has been too low to be detected or I've missed my LH surge on the digital. So A, it's been a waste of money carrying on testing or maybe something's happened this month. I was panicking. But today, day 11, like as in flashy faces, yeah, so I've had 11 flashing faces day 19. Yesterday was my 11th day of flashing faces. Okay. Today, cycle day 20, CM lots, 7am concentrated urine. I have a blazing positive on the pound strips. And I do that with same sample and I've got my static. I finally got my peak ovulation. And like I say, the CM is lots. My niggles are probably on a number four. And this, I'm going to show you now, is my OPK journey. Right, hang on, let's try and do this a bit better. And the OPKs I used today, I used one step. My little girl's just gone off with the packet. I don't know, one step Amazons and then I did one of those. You get these, probably they're a bit like your wand foe probably. You get three in a pack for a quid, a pound. Okay, so they came up, that one came up more positive than the one step. So I reckon, from my opinion, those one steps, they got a wide strip, they did get darker last cycle, and they do get darker, but I just feel I should have just stuck to them rather than order them, I reckon, I don't know. But yeah, let's give you a little lowdown of this. Can you see that? That's the bottom one there that you can see. Can you see day 20 in the morning is significantly darker, so it's giving me my peak. But going up, oh, I don't know, hang on. If you look at day 12, let me change this over, hang on. If you look at day 12, on that ovulation, I'm trying to, sorry, it's really shockingly bad. Can you see day 12, just here, 9 a.m., it's dark. It's, I'd say it's only one shade darker than, can you see the bottom? So the, my bottom one says day 20 today, peak ovulation, it's nice and dark. But I'd say day 12 is dark anyway. So look, day eight is when I started testing nothing not a sausage day nine flashing and look i've put on the thing so i've literally gone high ovulation right until peak bottom and that little bit of writing says ran out of cartridges that was so i tested day 12 9 p.m and then i didn't test till 8 p.m on 13 so as you can see day 12 is like really dark like 9 a.m. getting darker, 9 p.m. dark, so I was expecting to ovulate then. I mean, is it... Right, is it normal? Do people ovulate twice? Could I have ovulated day 12, late at night, and then day 13? I missed it. Probably not. But anyway, ladies, my room is a state. I need to do lots of washing and stuff today. We've got a play date with Teddy. I've got to be over there by half ten and it's already quarter to ten and I've got to wash and dress this little munchkin. <coughs> Say hi <coughs> to everyone. <coughs> this is a super long video, but I felt you guys deserved it. <coughs> Thank you all for your support. So, cycle day 20, I'm peak ovulation. Oh, hang on. I've just got to tell you, recap when we've baby danced. So, if I am pregnant, it might help you. If I'm not pregnant, it didn't help, did it? So, <coughs> loads of you have said baby dance every other day. We've done that. We've chopped and changed the way we've baby danced, the cycle days. But I'm going to tell you what we've done this time. So I came off my period on day five. at spitty spotty day six on the 21st of May. Seven completely clear, do you remember? So we baby danced this time. We had flashing face, our first flashing face on day nine. We baby danced day nine, day ten, day eleven. 
Day 12, missed 13 because my friend, my boy's friend was staying over. Baby dance day 14, day 15. Missed 16 because we were knackered. Baby danced day 17. Baby danced day 18. And missed 19. So we've only missed day 13, day 16 and day 19. So we're baby dancing tonight and tomorrow night. So as for the ovulation shuttles thing, it's gonna promote a boy. But I'm hoping that by baby dancing day 18, there might be a little fat little survivor waiting for the egg before the boy gets there. That's what I'm hoping. But I don't care now, I really don't care. I just wanna be blessed with a baby. So thank you for watching. We have baby danced a lot. We've ticked all the boxes and I've finally reached day 20 of my cycle peak ovulation so this heading on this one is going to be never give up 11 straight days of flashing opk finally got a peak that's what i'm going to put as my heading so please 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 like and subscribe if you haven't i want to reach 500 subscribers so i can do my giveaway please 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 comment down below because we can join all the network together and hopefully all have a stressful a uh, stress free TTC journey and love to you all and baby dust to you all and blow it back my way. Love you all. Thank you for watching. I know it's been a long one. Thank you. Bye.